Our good afternoon now. The answer part is we're here on the record. In the versus Trontavia Stevens in indictment 22 SC 183572. Um, good evening, Ms. Gladden, and good evening, Mr. Stevens. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening. And uh, good evening, Ms. Love, and good evening, Ms. Hilton. Good evening, Your Honor. Good All right. Uh, Mr. Stevens, can I get you to raise your right hand the best you're able, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you shall give in the matter now in hearing? Should be the truth, the whole truth, none but the truth, have you God so firm? I do. All right, you need to speak up, sir. I do. Okay, all right. Put your hand down. All right, Mr. Stevens, over the next several minutes, I'm sure Ms. Gladden has probably told you, we're going to go through what's called a providency inquiry. Half of it is what we call your Boykin rights. That means those are constitutional rights that every criminal accused enjoys, meaning because in our system of jurisprudence, we don't force people to plead guilty. So courts have to make sure you understand your rights and you give those up freely and voluntarily before I can sentence you, okay? So that's the first part. The second part of the inquiry, the state has to lay out a factual basis as to what they would have been able to prove at trial beyond a reasonable doubt. So assuming that they can, those two things, um, they pass, then I can determine that your plea is provident and accept your negotiated plea, okay? You gotta, you gotta answer yes, sir. yes or no for the record. Okay, all right. So, Ms. Love, is it gonna be you, Ms. Love? It's going to be Ms. Okay. Hilton. Hilton is going to ask you a series of questions that's designed to get at the two areas we talked about. When she's done, your attorney, Ms. Gladden, will, will, will offer me some things on your behalf, and then you and I will have a short conversation, and, and I should be able to accept your plea, okay? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. All right, madam, go right ahead. Thank you. May I take off my mask? For you me? can, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Stevens, if you could please um, state your true and correct legal name. Trontavia Stevens. And are you the same person referred to as Trontavia Stevens, also known as Tick and also known as Slug, on indictment 22SC 183572? Yes. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medicine? No. How old are you? 29. And how far have you gone in school? I got a GED. Okay. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. Do you understand that you are charged in this indictment with count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act? Yes. Do you understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? Yes. And if you plead not guilty or remain silent, you may receive a jury trial? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your lawyer, your attorney Gladden, about all the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charge in this indictment? Yes. Have you also been able to speak with her about any potential defenses? Yes. Do you need any more time to discuss this matter with your attorney? No. Are you satisfied with her counsel and representation? Yes. Do you waive formal reading of the indictment? Excuse me? So waived. Yes. I asked if um, your attorney, you and your attorney waive formal reading of the indictment. That means they don't want to read the charge. If not, I got to read the indictment. Yeah. Oh. So, so waived. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you waive any and all defects, if any, with respect to the indictment? Yes. Uh, Mr. Stevens, have you been arrested on these charges? Have you been arrested on these charges? Yes. Okay. And, Your Honor, the state is unaware of any outstanding warrants related to these charges. Um, Ms. Gladden, do you know, if, are you aware of any outstanding warrants as it relates to these charges? I'm not. Okay. Has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for the charge in which you are pleading to? Yes. And do you understand that um, as to count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, that it carries a minimum of five years and a maximum of 20 years in custody? Yes. <clears throat> do you understand this is a negotiated plea of guilty, which means that the state will recommend to the court a sentence that I will read, but the court does not have to accept this recommendation and that the court can sentence you to the maximum on each charge. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand that this plea, the state's offer on this plea is as to count one, 10 years to serve two years, commute to time served with a balance of eight years on probation? 
Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand that there are certain special conditions as it relates to this negotiation? Yes. For one, you shall abide in full by each and all of the terms of this negotiated agreement, and your failure to abide by any of the terms of the agreement shall constitute a violation of this agreement. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand that you shall testify truthfully about all matters relating to this case upon which you are questioned at any trial or judicial proceeding stemming from the facts alleged in this indictment? Yes. Do you understand that in accordance with testifying truthfully about all matters related to this case, you acknowledge that each and all the statements contained within the defendant's factual acknowledgments portion of this agreement are true, and that you will testify truthfully about those statements and any matters related to this case when asked to do so? Yes. Do you understand as a special condition, condition you shall possess no guns unless your right to do so is restored? Yes. That you should also submit to random drug screens by the Department of Community Supervision and any agency designated by this court. Yes. That you shall commit no criminal acts. Yes. And that you will relinquish any Fifth Amendment right related to any statement contained within the defendant's factual acknowledgments contained within this plea agreement, and you will make no attempt at trial to assert a Fifth Amendment privilege when questioned on these matters. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand that some of the factual acknowledgments that you acknowledge is one, that Young Slime Life, a.k.a. YSL, is an organization made up of three or more members or associates who share common identifiers that include but are not limited to colors, hand signals, and terminology, who have committed crimes intended to increase the notoriety, street credibility, and reputation of YSL. Is that one of your acknowledgments? Yes. Do you also acknowledge that you are one of the founding members of Young Slime Life? Yes. Do you also acknowledge that you committed an aggravated assault as alleged in count one of this indictment by brandishing a gun at an undercover police officer that was surveilling a vehicle that was hijacked from a woman? Yes. Do you acknowledge that in October of 2014, you were arrested with a red bandana and you were observed with a YSL tattoo and a Cleveland Avenue Rock Crew tattoo amongst other tattoos? Yes. Do you also acknowledge in that same incident when you were asked by law enforcement about your rock crew, your rock crew and your YSL tattoos that you truthfully advised law enforcement that you were a member of a gang called Rock Crew, but that that group is no longer going by that name and now goes by YSL, which originally stood for Young Slime Life? Yes. Did you also in that same conversation um, advised law enforcement that YSL originally stood for Young Slime Life, but the group began calling itself Young Successful Lifestyle after Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, signed a record deal. Yes. Do you also acknowledge that the statements made to police about Rock Crew and YSL as reflected in sections three and four above, which I just mentioned, are true and accurate? Yes. Yeah. You acknowledge that you've been accused of and arrested for robbing women. Yes. You acknowledge that you are the same person referred to as Tick in the song by Young Thug entitled You in the verse She Getting Robbed by Tick. Yes. You also acknowledge that on October, excuse me, on February 4th, 2021, you participated in a group chat with fellow YSL founder Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, and YSL Associates, Wooney Lee, a.k.a. Slime Life Shorty, wherein Jeffrey Williams stated, YSL rule the work, world, kid. Y'all just start bringing me the money. Man, y'all stop playing with me. Do you acknowledge that? Yeah. Do you acknowledge that on May 13, 2021, you participated in another group chat with fellow YSL founder Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, and YSL Associates, Martinez Arnold, Miles Farley, Quantavius Greer, Antonio Sumlin, Mooney Lee, where Jeff Jeffrey Williams asked, y'all ain't beat him up or shot him yet? Then states, y'all getting soft. Yes. Do you acknowledge that the gas station at 151 Cleveland Avenue is a location where YSL Associates sell drugs? Yes. That also the gas station at 221 Cleveland Avenue is a location where YSL Associates sell drugs? Yes. And also, do you acknowledge that you cannot truthfully assert that anyone's charge in this indictment is not guilty of the crimes as alleged in this indictment, and you will not make any attempt at trial, 
prior to trial or after trial to exonerate or exculpate anyone charged this indictment of the crimes alleged in this indictment, nor will you claim that anyone on this indictment is not guilty of the crime as charged in this indictment. Yes. Do you also acknowledge that if you violate the plea agreement, the district attorney can and will use a statement during any judicial proceeding? Yes. You also understand and acknowledge that if you violate any portion of this plea agreement before, during, or after the initial trial of this case, you are subject to having the entire the entirety of your sentence revoked. Yes. And you could be sentenced to prison. Yes. Do you also understand if you violate any terms of this plea agreement, it will result in your sentence being revoked and the district attorney will recommend that you serve up to the maximum sentence allowed by law in the Georgia Department of Corrections. Yes. Do you also understand fully that if the prior to the conclusion of the initial trial of this case, that you fail or refuse to testify to any fact that you now acknowledge in this plea agreement, such failure or refusal constitutes a violation of this plea agreement, and you'll be subject to being sentenced to serve the remainder of your sentence confined within the Georgia Department of Corrections. Yes. Do you also acknowledge that no promises, agreements, or conditions have been made other than those set forth in this document, and none will be entered into unless memorialized in writing and signed by all parties? Yes. And did you, along with your attorney, sign this document and dated today's date, February, excuse me, December 29, 2022? Yes. And that's your signature here? Yes. Do you understand that this plea may be used to enhance sentencing on other convictions in this jurisdiction as well as in other jurisdictions, including the federal courts? Yes. Do you understand that if you are currently on probation or parole, your probation or parole may be revoked based on your entering a guilty plea today? What are on it? By the law, they have to say that your probation or parole. Why that ain't in the paper, it. though? That's a boy can write. That's just a I ain't read it. Can you repeat that? Sure. I'm giving. I'm letting you know your rights. That's not something that's going to. Well, I can't tell you that something that's not going to happen. That's not something that we're asking for the court to do. But that's something that that's a right that I have to read to you. All right. All right. Yes. Sorry. So I'm reading your rights now. I'm going back to reading your rights that you're giving up by entering into a plea. Do you understand that if you are currently on probation or parole, your probation or parole may be revoked based on your entering a guilty plea today? Yes. Do you understand that if you are placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit or any special conditions of probation without being subject to revocation for the balance of the sentence? Yes. Do you understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes. Do you understand that if you are not a United States citizen, a guilty plea conviction will affect your immigration status and will result in deportation? Yes. <clears throat> Do you understand? Excuse me. Do you understand that there may be other adverse or unfavorable consequences as a result of this guilty plea conviction, just as there would be from a conviction following a trial? Yes. For example, your guilty plea may affect your right to vote, your right to hold public office your right to serve on a jury, your right to obtain a passport, your right to receive, possess, or transport a firearm, or the ability to obtain employment. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, if you use, receive, possess, or transport a firearm, or use a firearm in a crime, you will be guilty of a felony, which may carry a sentence of one to 15 years? Yes. Do you understand that you waive any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses, by entering a plea of guilty? Yes. Do you understand if you went to trial, that you had the right to a trial by jury, the right to see, hear, and confront witnesses called to testify against you, and the right to testify or to remain silent and not incriminate yourself? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights? And after each right, I'm going to ask you to say yes or no if you understand, okay? You understand that you're giving, a, giving up the right to a trial by jury. Yes. The right to remain silent and not incriminate yourself. Yes. The right to confront witnesses against you. Yes. The right to assistance of counsel hired by you 
or to court appointed counsel if you cannot afford an attorney at a trial of your case. Yes. The right to the presumption of innocence. Yes. The right to testify on your own behalf and to present other evidence. Yes. The right to subpoena witnesses and compel the production of evidence. Yes. The right to have the charges against you proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. The right to appeal if convicted of these charges after a trial. Yes. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a, and enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes. With respect to indictment 22 SC 183572, where you're charged with one count of conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, how do you plead? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with a full knowledge of the charges against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes. Do you understand that you have four years from today's date for the felony charge to file a habeas corpus petition challenging the voluntariness of this plea? Yes. And Your Honor, if this case were to go to trial, the state would expect to prove that the organization YSL um, is an enterprise um, that this defendant is a part of that enterprise along with his other co-defendants and together on or between the 24th day of January 2013 and 8th day of May 2022 see, they did a lawfully conspire to acquire maintain directly and indirectly an interest in and control of United States currency and other personal property through a pattern of racketeering activity and also while associated with an enterprise did unlawfully conspire to conduct and participate in directly and indirectly such enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. That the associates of the enterprise Young Slime Life, also known as YSL, that they did conspire to associate together with others for the common purpose of illegally obtaining money and property through a pattern of racketeering activity and conducting and participating in the enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. And in furtherance of the conspiracy, the defendants engaged in the activities, in certain activities which are enumerated. Some of those activities include preserving, protecting, and enhancing the reputation, power, and territory of the enterprise through acts of racketeering activity, including murder, assault, and threats of violence. Preserving, protecting, and enhancing the reputation power and territory of the enterprise by the posting of messages, images, videos, and songs demonstrating an allegiance to the enterprise and a willingness to engage in violence on its behalf, that maintaining armed individuals ready and willing to preserve, protect, enhance the reputation, power, and territory of the enterprise through the use of violence, and obtaining money, weapons, and other property through acts of racketeering activity, including robbery, theft, and the unlawful sale and distribution of drugs. The state will also prove that um, YSL is a criminal street gang that started in the late 2012 in the Cleveland Avenue area of Atlanta, Georgia, that some of the founders were Jeffrey Williams, also known as Young Thug, also known as Slime, Walter Murphy, also known as DK, and this defendant, Trontavia Stevens, also known as Tick, and also known as Slug. That um, YSL uses a variety of identifiers, including colors, clothing, tattoos, and hand signs, as well as verbal and written identifiers. And we will show that this defendant had a tacit understanding of the enterprise and furthered the enterprise's goals with several acts some of those acts are from January of 2013. This defendant, in which he pled guilty, was accused of aggravated assault, in which um, on that day, um, an officer with the APD police department was working in an undercover capacity. That, def that officer was at an apartment complex in the Cleveland Avenue area doing surveillance on a vehicle that had been hijacked by another YSL associate. While operating in that undercover capacity, Mr. Stevens came out of the apartment along with that other YSL associate and brandished his um, handgun at that officer. Next, we have um, another action honor where Mr. Stevens has a picture of himself on social media. Um, he has another several pictures on social media. Some of those captions on that on the video 
excuse me, on the on the images identify YSL by using the term slime shit and actually tags Mr. Stevens um, with his one of his former um, Instagram handles as original slime under, underscore slug. Also in January 2015, he is um, he has a, a drug incident that comes from 1813 Sylvan Road in which he was found with narcotics in the vehicle. Also in one of the counts in our indictment, Your Honor, he was in a car um, off of Cleveland Avenue, which is in the YSL stronghold. He was in that car with a co-defendant on this, on this indictment, Shannon Jackson, also known as Shannon Stillwell. While in the car, officers smelled the odor of marijuana. Upon the search of the vehicle, they found marijuana and a gun. At the time of finding both the gun, uh, both him as well as Mr. Jackson were both convicted felons and they were then charged accordingly. Your Honor, as you heard in, within the factual acknowledgement, he's also been engaged in conversations with um, other members of this indictment. Um, we won't go back over what was said, but you also heard that through his through the factual acknowledgement in this case. So, Your Honor, based upon um, the, that factual synopsis um, and uh, Mr. Stevens' affiliation, we were asked we will ask that the court accept his plea. Also, we would like to turn to Stacey's one TS into evidence. One which? TS. One TF. Yes. Any objection, Ms. Gladden? No, Your Honor. All right, one, uh, states one TF is admitted. Uh, Ms. CS, um, Your Honor, S C as in Stevens. CS? T as in Trontavious, S as in Stevens. <coughs> All right. Any objection, madam? No, Your Honor. All right, it's admitted for purpose of plea. <clears throat> Ms. Um, Hilton, those facts that you uh, elucidated for the court, those are facts that you would, uh, the state would have proven had the case gone to trial beyond a reasonable doubt as it pertains to Mr. Stevens? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Ms. Gladden, uh, again, good evening, madam. Anything you want to present on Mr. Stevens' behalf? Just briefly, Your Honor. <clears throat> Go ahead. Judge, I just wanted to point out, as the court, of course, um, can ascertain by the fact that he was only charged in the RICO counts, um, he's not involved and hasn't been charged separately in any uh, criminal activity regarding this case that has been alleged against some other co-defendants. He had a string of issues in 2011, 12, 13. He went to prison in 2015 and has been out since the end of 2018. And since then, he's been a model parolee. He's passed all of his urine screens. He's not gotten in any more trouble. In fact, they put a parole hold on him. But when they found out that this was basically based on old crimes um, and a few posts that were innocuous and some pictures, they did remove the parole hold. So I'm asking the court to accept the state's recommendation. Um, and I did just wanted to point out that he's tried to be um, a good citizen and do what he's supposed to do um, uh, since he's been out of prison, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Mr. Stevens, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, do you have the opportunity to fully discuss the facts and circumstances of this case with your attorney, Ms. Gladden, your satisfaction? Yes, Your Honor. Did she explain to you the various constitutional rights you give up by pleading guilty to your satisfaction? Yes, Your Honor. Those are the same rights that my prosecutor, Ms. Hilton, just set forth on the record a few minutes ago. Do you have any questions about those rights you wish to ask me? No, Your Honor. All right. I am holding the indictment in this case. Okay. And on page six of the indictment, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Is this your signature on the on the page of this indictment above the word defendant? Yes, sir. All right. Before signing this indictment, did you have the opportunity to fully discuss the facts and circumstances of this indictment with your attorney, Ms. Gladden, to your satisfaction? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Do you need more time to discuss it with her? No. I'm okay. I just want, but before you signed it, you had an opportunity to talk with her. Yeah. And you don't want to talk with her about the indictment anymore? 
No. Okay, all right. I'll note the indictment's been signed and the plea has been entered. Um, Mr. Stevens, based upon the responses that you've given during the court's inquiry, I find that your guilty plea is freely and voluntarily entered. I find a factual basis for your plea. I'm going to accept your plea as tendered and as negotiated. To count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, the court will sentence you to 10 years to serve two years. I'll commute that to the time you've already served with a balance of eight years on probation subject to the special conditions that have already been set forth on the record. Um, I'll go through those with you right now. But is that your understanding as to the base sentence? Yes, sir. All right. So you shall abide by each and every uh, condition of the negotiated agreement. That's the one that uh, you signed and Ms. Um, Gladden signed along with the state's counsel. You remember that one? Yes, sir. Uh, that, sta uh, that state's SC1 as it pertains to you. Yes, sir. Okay? All right. Um, you shall testify truthfully about all matters relating to this case upon which you are questioned in any trial or judicial proceedings stemming from the facts alleged in the indictment. You agree to do that, right? Okay. In accordance with testifying truthfully uh, about the uh, statements contained within the defendant's factual acknowledgments, which was already read into the record, are true, you shall testify about those statements in any matters related to the case when you're asked to do so. Yes, sir. Okay. You possess, you'll possess no guns unless your right to do so is re restored. Is that right? Yes, sir. You shall submit to random screens as uh, required by the Department of Community Supervision and any agency designated by this court. Is that right? Yes, sir. You shall commit no criminal acts. Yes, sir. All right. And also, you'll be subject to a curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless you're otherwise working, in school, or an emergency situation arises. Hold you, sir. 29. 29? Yes, sir. Do you have any children? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? Three. How old are they? Eleven and two seven-year-olds. Okay. So let's say, for example, your seven-year-old gets sick. Or your is it 12-year-old or 10-year-old? Eleven. Eleven-year-old gets sick. And it's two o'clock in the morning. You need to take them to a dock in a box or some of the emergency room. That wouldn't violate your probation, okay? All right. Or you need to go pick up your mother at the airport um, in Hartsfield um, at very early in the morning. That wouldn't violate your probation, okay? All right. But if you're out someplace where you're not supposed to be, like a strip club, past this particular point in time, at 10 o'clock in the evening, you'll have some problems. You'll be coming back to see me. You should be at home anyways. It's a statistical probability that it's less likely that crime will find you or you will be involved in criminality if you're at home between the hours of 11 and 4 in the morning. Okay, unfortunately, those are the times that we have a lot of things that go, go on within our city that um, it's not a guarantee, but it'll lessen your being involved in that for, for your family's sake and for your sake. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. And um, you can't have any contact with anybody else in this indictment until these proceedings are over. Yes, sir. And what I mean by that is until the appellate procedure in this particular case is over, if any. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions about my sentence? No, sir. Ms. Gladden or Ms. Hilton, any clarifications on the court's entry of sentence or defense entry of plea? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Nothing from defense, Your Honor. All right, then that'll be the sentence of the court. Mr. Stevens, good luck to you, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we're in recess on this matter? Thank you. Okay. What's your address? Did I Edward? Two nine four. Two one two nine four. Okay.